There's no point blank today because Mr. Michael Buhendran, the husband of lawyer Ms. Lo Hui Yen, has spoken for the first time. Ms. Lo was killed during the Mumbai terror attacks last week. Tonight, we bring you his full unedited interview. I'm Amanda from Razor TV. Hi. Right, um, I mean, thanks everyone. I mean, um, uh, for wait, for I mean, for waiting also. And um, um, I think the first thing um, I would like to do is to thank people for um, all the well wishes that they gave. Um, I haven't read. I mean, you know, I haven't read a lot of the things, but I understand that it, it, it's been um, overwhelming support from the public and everything else. And I guess next week uh, when this is. Her farewell is is true. We will. I'll, I'll have a look at all those things. But I mean, we we are clearly very thankful for all the support that we receive from everyone. Okay. Um. I would like to also just thank the um, MFA, MFA guys who were um, with us all the way once it happened, um, helping us to get there when we did, um, and on the being with us on the ground in. Um, in, in Mumbai, or with uh, me and my aunt, but um, and um, I mean they they did everything they could when they were there. Yeah. Okay, I guess um, I, I don't have anything prepared, frankly speaking. So other than that, so um, I, I guess if you want, you ask questions, and I, if if I um, on the events itself, I, I have s some limited things to say, but I mean, um, um, uh, but about her, the person, about a relationship. Right, and I, I would be happy to talk about that. Okay. I can ask the question. I don't know how much you're willing to say, and I don't want to be so obvious. I think we'll, we'll take that last of all. So, if you want, I mean, we'll we'll deal with everything else first. I was going to yeah. when you first met her. Okay. About her. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, we met um, through a mutual friend, um, San Sandy, who um, has been one of those who's been really working like crazy helping to put this together for her as well along with Sean and Sister Carol and everybody else actually frankly speaking um, and I guess if you have seen the pictures I guess you know that the first thing that probably strikes you is that smile right I mean it's it's clearly from within right I think it's um, it's 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 a it's a smile that just captures you and knows that this is a person who smiles of a whole being right and and that was probably what what you know what struck me first. Um, so that would be the first time I met her. Actually, I think it was just it was actually a very brief meeting. You know, just along uh, Raffles Place somewhere in uh, in the middle of uh, what's now Change Alley, I think. And and I was I was like I was, they thought I'm going to ask Sandy uh, who's who's the babe and <laughs> yeah. Sandy met her. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sandy was uh, basically uh, she she was. Um, uh, Sandy's uh, well, she wasn't Sandy's pupil, but she was a pupil that's sitting outside Sandy's room. Sandy is a she's now a partner at Drew and Napier, and she was then a pupil at Drew and Napier. And um, you know, she's um, she was always the one who would be um, you know inquisitive and super curious whenever you know Sandy would be out of the office and hey, where do you go? You know, who are you meeting and kind of stuff. So she, she um, and basically became you know even though there was a you know big gap between the levels of seniority, I mean um, they've been they become the best of friends basically, but they became the best of friends. Yeah. 
how did you uh, approach her, you know, to, to get the number or to ask her on your phone? Yeah, I guess um, uh, it was just um, another day at Spinelli's when, you know, I bumped into her and... Um, and and well, kind of yeah. Obviously, spoke to her and said, "Hey, we should go for lunch together." And um, and uh, she was wondering why the first lunch I suggested was at this place called San Marco at the Fullerton. It was kind of odd for a first lunch, I guess. But <laughs> but yeah. So that that we we went for our first date during a, a office lunch, I guess, a lunch hour. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, there's there's so much love about her, right? But um, I think the one that really strikes um, struck me was really her, her selfless love. I mean, mind you, she was um, you know far from uh, um, um, you know she, she she could be incredibly stubborn at times, and you know she incredibly feisty. You know, she knew what she wanted. She was a very much her own person. But you know what? You know the the people she loved, the friends around her, right? I mean, she she loved with a huge degree of passion. She, she was completely selfless in in you know what what she would do for them, and you know um, she would be the one who would really. Um, I mean, yeah. Well, to, probably not the best analogy, but you know, in order to make people happy, right? One one of the things she would do is like you know, if, if they'll be out at drinks, she'll be the ones who will be the, the one buying the drinks, making sure that people were having a good time. You know, it doesn't matter about you know, um, uh, um, actually just um, well, gi- giving her all to people. So her selflessness, I think, is is something that um, you know struck me the most. And and, and in a way, it, it was beneath some layers. You know, she she it was um, she wasn't one of those people you think okay, you know, it's, it's like everything she'll do kind of thing. But but once you got to know her, once you realize you know the, um, you got to know her better, you realize really what what a precious gem that she was. Mm, yeah, well, we'll see that for later. <laughs> I should. Um, we actually went to the Maldives. Um, I, it was I, I. I can tell you that I. I was. I was. I'm nine. I'm nine years old. I, nine years older than she is, actually. And um, so, you know. But when I met her, I, I knew from the immediately I was going to get married, and um, I was going to marry. I wanted to marry her, and I, I guess I kind of you know waited all my life to find her and um, when I think we I, I proposed to her within I think eight months of our getting to know each other um, and I was just very for some reason I was just very very sure that she was the one that I wanted to marry so we took a trip to the Maldives and that's where um, I proposed um, Yeah, she. Um, then I guess next came you know the planning the wedding and I guess um, she she wanted a wedding in Bali, right? Um, and uh, well, I I don't know. I guess some of you would have seen some of the pictures, but you know we 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 really had a, a beautiful wedding there. Um, you surprised her in Maldives when you proposed. <laughs> I well, I, I <laughs> she claims that I she knew I was coming when I started asking her leading questions like, "Oh, are you happy when you're with me?" and everything else. So she said, "Yeah, I think this guy is up to something." <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, but um, so so I think uh, the, being the, the the lawyer and everything else, I think she was you know uh, quite sharp and kind of knew I was coming when be- just about before I proposed. Yeah. How did you uh, propose to her? You know, the uh, surroundings, the environment. Well, it was, um, we went to the, the banyan tree in uh, the Maldives, actually. Um, and there was this little um, shala that kind of goes out from the, um, from, from the villa out to almost the, the beach side. And, um, and it was 12 o'clock at night because these, you arrive for night flights and stuff like that, right? So it was a beautiful moonlit night and everything else. Everything else was quiet and we just basically... Um, you know, proposed to her in, in, in that shala itself. Yeah. So you, you proposed to her the same night that you uh, touched down in the mountain? Yeah, I guess I couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't intending to do it then, but I, in the end, yeah, well. And what was the reaction from the question? 
Yeah, well, Inspector of the Rings first. No, no, of course not. No. <laughs> she, she, uh, I mean, she was obviously very happy to see us. Yeah. Did she cry? Yeah. Yeah, well, actually, what you're seeing is over a lo- fairly long period, so it's not that frequent, to be frank. I mean, like, uh, yeah, it's, um, but in fact, this year, the it so happened that the, the Melbourne trip was probably the, the, the big trip that we took the, the whole of this year, actually. And it so happened, that was when, that was the week before we left, I think, uh, we got back on the 21st of November, and we were there since the Sunday that was before that, so... Um, we basically went down to Melbourne to Yarra Valley to Phillip Island we met friends while we were in Melbourne as well and um, I mean we basically had a great time there yeah yeah we No, yeah, I'm a fan, and, and it so happens that she's a fan as well. I mean, even though she's uh, that much younger than me, for some reason she likes old things like me. So, <laughs> and she she likes old, she likes retro music and, and as well. I mean, um, you know, um, uh, I guess one alternative we considered for having this her farewell um, uh, party was Zook as well because that's her second home really. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, yeah, we were there. We, were, we actually had second row seats actually. So, in the end, it was, uh, I think. Well, it was just as well, obviously, that we had second row seats and we really, really enjoyed ourselves. It was in 2006, yeah. I guess. I mean, that, yeah, because it was literally the night before already, right? And I basically sent her to the airport the next morning. Well, I guess the other. Th- the other thing I would add, I guess, is um, that, you know, in the last few weeks of our relationship, to some extent, right, I mean, it was, it, it was truly the best, times of, best time of my life. I mean, um, you know, we're newlyweds, then here and there you had minor teething problems and stuff like that and, and all. And towards the middle of the year, because she was very busy at work and everything else, we, we were, you know, uh, we, we were having the occasional tiff and stuff like that. But you know, one we we about a f- about a few months ago, we had you know a really good heart to heart talk, and I told her that, you know, I mean, I explained to her that you know sometimes I look like I have demands and stuff like that, not because a case of wanting her, but really because I I really needed her, and I think when she understood what she meant to me, because it wasn't a case of me, you know, just wanting somebody there to keep me company, but. I mean, she really was my entire life. Um, you know, I guess you guys would have seen the obituary. I don't know if you've seen it, but you've seen the obituary and it says, you know, my life has no purpose and no meaning. And I mean, that's something which, I mean, that's what, that's what I mean right now because um, I don't, you know, I, for her, if she want me to do it, so I'm going to carry on, right? But I mean... Everything, everything I did, um, I did for her. Everything I, I, you know, my whole life really revolved around here already. So I mean, you know, and 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 and, and she truly was the meaning of my life. <laughs>